What's good, everybody, man? It's your boy, June. You're back at it again with another reaction video, bro. We got rappers who lie about their past, bro. I know. I know there's a bunch of them that lie about their past, bro. We about to see who mainly rap about that shit, bro. We about to see who mainly lie about that shit right now. Let's react, though. The wild story is important when you're trying to break into the rap game. Okay. Fans don't want to hear street bars from dudes who grew up in the suburbs. So rappers lie about they come up for clout. Today, we're bringing down the biggest Every rapper. rapper don't have to come from the hood, dog. That, that's what people don't understand, bro. You can be a rapper from the suburbs, high class shit, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? You don't have to be no hood nigga to be rapping, dog. Lied about their past and ended up getting exposed. Back in 2020, a drill rapper from Staten Island named CJ blew up off the track Wooty. In the video, him and his homies were rocking red bandanas, and fans thought he was repping the Bloodhound Brims. Whoopty is a greeting that the brim started, but CJ claimed he invented the phrase and said he was going to trademark it so no one else could make money off of it. This led to a dude named LeBrim making a phone call from prison and calling CJ out. LeBrim was hit with a 30 year sentence back in 2019 for his connection to the Bloodhound Brims, but he didn't appreciate CJ for jacking the phrase. On the call, he said, So I'm going to take a moment to set the record straight for y'all. I see there's a lot of controversy over this Whoopty thing. So, first and foremost, CJ made a hot song, but the content that he used is not his content. So his foundation is based off a lie. He's not Whoopty. He don't know nothing about Whoopty. He just seen a fly splash and he jacked it, which is a smart move. But in life, you got to show respect and you can't live a lie. Now you jacking something that they got dudes in jail for. They gave me 30 years for a lifestyle full of allegations of a lifestyle that you talked about that you never lived. Other drill rappers like 22Gs also called out CJ for being an industry plant. CJ clapped back with a freestyle and said, first things first, bitch, I'm his squad brim. And if you got a problem with it, you can suck my dick. Wanna kill me? Wait, wait, who is this nigga first of all, bro? Who, who is this nigga, bro? CJ? Hey, who, who? Hold on, let me, let me check this nigga out real quick. Right, hold on. C, CJ who? CJ Lemon Pepper? What this nigga is, bro. I heard some fuck. Let me prep a freestyle. Fuck. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother, bro. I'm not gonna bother, bro. There's no point, bro. There's no point. Crazy how called my brother then turn snitch. His squad brims are another blood set, but it's not clear if CJ is actually affiliated with them. His uncle also works at the label he's signed to, which makes it look like the industry plant rumors are true. If CJ just showed respect to the dudes who came up with Wooty, there wouldn't be an issue. But instead, he lied about where it came from and got aired out by a bunch of dudes who are really street certified. In 2015, a skinny white kid from Ohio named Slim Jesus dropped a track called Drill Time. It sounded like something straight out of Chicago, with Slim dropping bars like, I f with savages, you a f boy you can't hang. You can finally post it up on Frank Block with my fing gang. You ain't really bout shit, stay out my spot, don't speak my name. Or I'll pull up on your block at night, wearing all black, and let that 40 bang. The track went viral, and Slim Jesus was getting talked about everywhere online. Some people thought it was all a joke, but others said he was really about that life. But a month after Drill Time came out, Slim talked to DJ Vlad and told him it was all cap. In the interview, he said, For the most part on the street shit, like, I got homies that are in that shit, and I know people who are, and people around me. I mean, I haven't, like, I'm not out here catching bodies and shit, obviously. The fuck? He says he was rapping about guns and killing people because he thought it was cool and would get him attention. The After fuck? Hold video, on, bro. I'm, I'm saying, I already know this nigga wasn't on shit, first of all, bro. This nigga was never on shit. And, yo, who the people who thought this nigga was actually doing all this shit, bro? The fuck? Y'all actually believe this nigga was doing this shit, bro? I know this nigga was cat, bro. The first time I heard this song, I know this nigga was cat, bro. Hey, I knew he was not living this lifestyle, bro. Like, come on, bro. And y'all actually believe this nigga actually lived this life? No, he did not, bro. He no, he did not, bro. Said, I saw Slim Jesus. I thought he was cool. Then I seen the other shit when he was like, I don't really do this. It's too late. You got people who really doing it that are offended. Damn, bro. Sending him from dudes really living that life. But luckily, For real. Nothing serious ever went down. Slim is still dropping music. But his he still is? He barely racked up 30k streams on Spotify. He went viral for a few days back in 2015, but it looks like everyone moved on after he admitted to capping. 
21 Savage hasn't been in the game that long, but he was already on his way to becoming an Atlanta legend. He's been repping Zone 6 his whole career and talking about his wild come up in the streets. That's why the whole world was shocked when news broke that 21 was actually from London. In 2019, 21 was arrested by ICE for being in the US illegally. A rep from ICE told CNN, his whole public persona is false. He actually came to the US from the UK as a teen and overstayed his welcome. The situation isn't really that simple though. 21 moved to Atlanta legally with his mom when he was 7 years old. He went back to the UK for a month when he was 12, and when he came back to Atlanta, his visa allegedly expired. 21 told ABC News that he never really tried to hide his past, but he kept it low key because he didn't want to get deported. He said, I didn't even know what a visa was. I went in the first grade here, so I don't really remember too much. I remember like my grandma house, and that's probably about it. I didn't really do much here. I've been in Atlanta probably 20 years, 19 years. I'm from Atlanta. In my eyes, I wasn't trying to hide it. But I didn't want to get deported, so I wasn't going to just say, I wasn't born here, world. 21's case is still pending right now, but hopefully he gets the situation sorted out soon. The fuck? Am I the first one to know? The fuck? I did not know this shit. Community than pretty much any other rapper in the game. 6 9 popped off with the track Gummo. And we, 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 we all know about this nigga. Been gang banging his whole life. We all know about this rap, bro. Said, I'm on some robbing this shit. Take the Do the dash and the whip. Count the cash in the whip. Everybody know about his snitching ass. Nobody worry about him. And the video for the track, he had a bunch of dudes from the nine trade gangs the blood. One of the bloods in the video was a dude named Shoddy, who ended up becoming Six Nine's manager and introduced him to other dudes in the game. Before the Gummo video, Six Nine never repped the gang. He was from the area, knew some dudes, but never actually joined the set. After he linked up with Shoddy and the other nine trades, Six Nine allegedly got involved with all kinds of street activities like pushing weight, attempted murders, and more. But at the same time, he was blowing up in the rap game like crazy and was starting beef with tons of people in the industry. Everyone knows that 6 9 eventually flipped on the 9 trade Bloods and got his manager and ex-homies locked up. But Fat Joe claims that 6 9 was never in the streets anyway. Back in he May, was never was, bro. An expert opinion podcast and said 6 9 is a sucker. He's a a sucker, a This dude here, this type of shit this doing, I'm convinced he want to die. I don't wish it on him or nothing like that, but I'm convinced he's miserable in his body. He can't look in the mirror. Joe claims that back in 2018, he tried to kick some game to 6 9 and told him to be careful how he was moving in the streets. According to him, 6 9 said it was all an act and he wasn't actually out there committing crimes. 6 9 clapped back and said it was all cap. The Fat Joe is a New York legend and 6 9 is known as the biggest rat in hip hop. So most fans are believing Joe's side of the story. Of course. The fuck? Rick Ross blew up back in the 2000s off of tracks like Hustlin'. He built up his image as a Scarface type dude who moved weight and ran the city. He even named himself after the legendary drug kingpin, Freeway Ricky Ross. But in 2008, a website called The Smoking Gun posted a picture of Rick Ross wearing a prison guard uniform. At first, he denied that the picture was him. He even called out The Smoking Gun in a freestyle and said, I'm the boss and I'm laughing at your blogs. I'm the glue in the streets, meaning I can get you stuck. The world knows where the fuck I'm from, sell rocks, 20 chains, and I never lost one. Heavy on the block, never on the net. Ross told All Hip Hop, online hackers put my face when I was a teenager in high school on other people's bodies. If this shit was real, don't you think they would have more specifics, like dates and everything? But more evidence came out later, and Ross coped to working as a CEO. He told Don Diva Magazine, yes, it's me. I never tried to hide my past. I never ratted on a n I never prosecuted a n I never locked up a n that's first and foremost. When I'm making my music and I'm talking about blow, it's because I did it. When I say that I'm rich off cocaine, it's because I did it. A lot of people thought the news would be a huge hit on his career, but Ross made it through the situation without losing too much respect. He's still selling records about pushing weight, so obviously his fans weren't too pressed about the lying. Tyga has been in the rap game since he dropped his debut mixtape back in 2007. His whole career, he claimed that he came up in Compton, but in 2012, an unaired pilot for a show on MTV leaked and Tyga was caught in a lie. Footage from a game show called Busta started going around online, and in the clip, Tyga claimed that he actually grew up in the valley and had a comfortable life. He said, grew up not too tough, parents had a Range Rover, doing the- Why y'all niggas got to lie about y'all pass, bro? Hey, bro, you can still rap, bro. Like, nigga, if you're talented, bro, like, we gonna fuck for you for who we are. For, 
we gonna fuck with you for who you are, bro. Like, bro, stop capping, bro. Not too much hard. Oh. Street. Tiger hop on Twitter to defend himself and said, when you're 14 and ambitious, you don't give a fuck about anything. Scripted TV. Isn't that what we all live for? Ha 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 ha. And then in an interview on Power 106's Big Boy's Neighborhood, he said, the intro beginning was scripted. I never grew up in the valley. I lived in Compton slash Gardena my whole life. According to Tiger, he was just young and ready to do whatever it took to break into the industry. He said, I'm young, I'm ambitious, I don't care, I'm getting a check for this, I'm about to be on TV. At this point in my career, I'm at a point where I work so hard and for people to try and throw negative stuff, it's just retarded. The video didn't really hurt Tiger's career, but fans definitely looked at him differently after it came out. Yeah, that shit is weird, bro. I don't know why y'all got cap about, like, about shit like that, bro. Like, bro. Just be who you are, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit is weird as fuck. But if y'all fuck with that video, bro, make sure y'all leave a like, comment, and subscribe to your boy, bro. And I'm out, bro.